Well, hello there. Hello. So disappointed that I wasn't wearing these on the first episode. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm very disappointed. I'm so disappointed. I got a yeah. promo for Trinity. Are you kidding me? You know how cool it would have been if you were wearing those and I was wearing the Deacon Frost hair? <laughs> or, or I think it's so funny that you never made that connection, but then as soon as I said it, you were like, oh my fucking God, that's 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad you never had a pair of these because you could go like this in your side and I can just like pretend I'm catching them. <laughs> <laughs> no shit, eh? No uh, shit. So we're going to talk about the best of the whole Blade trilogy. The best one. No, we already talked about that. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the best of the entire trilogy, which is Blade Trinity. Best in the, tr- yeah, absolutely. Also, the best movie Dracula has ever appeared in ever. Sorry, is it Dracula or is it Drake? I mean, Drake is a lot more hip. It's actually both. It's it's Dracula and it's Drake. And it's Drake, yeah. Yeah, but uh, so Blade Trinity. <laughs> Blade, Blade Trinity. <laughs> now, yeah, I will say this about Blade Trinity. Blade Trinity, uh, while I don't think should have came out two years after Blade Two. I should have been within the three to four year mark, but I will say this, at least they still came out with this movie within the, uh, like all of the superhero movies, right? Yeah. Like this was around the time when like Daredevil and Ghost Rider, you know, and, and Punisher, what they were all doing, you know what I mean? So they were smart enough to get this movie out while it was good to do so yeah. because like this is where we were saying with Hellboy, this is what it should have done. When we were talking on the weekend, Hellboy three should have been done within relative four three years. to four years of Hellboy two, because then at least they probably still would have made money. Yeah, you know, I find when you go past four years for sequels, it's too long. Like four years all, but, is, your, is your cutoff. But it also depends on the property, right? Like property like Blade. Uh, or Hellboy, you know, these are properties where you can't necessarily, you don't have the luxury of being a movie that could wait 10 years to have a sequel. Whereas, uh, like Spider Man, for instance, Spider Man could have five years in between, and everyone's going to be like, that's totally fine because it's Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Like Batman, I think, was how many, was it four years between or five years between Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises? Uh, I want to say it was four years. No, well, okay. Batman Begins was 2005. Dark Knight Rises was 2013. Yeah, and Dark Knight every was Every four years. Every four years. Because Dark Knight was 2008. 2000. Yeah, so every oh. four years. Or no, three, yeah, so then, three and then four. Right. So, but like Batman Again is another one. Like Batman could be five years in between movies. Yeah. And people would still kick doors down to see a new batman movie like even uh, with the the batman with the covid and all this this delay it's not going to hamper it too badly because it's batman the only thing that'll hamper it is if it's it's a shitty movie <laughs> like it's a shitty take on on batman because like we we've talked about how like the amazing spider-man movies aren't the best movies they still did really good in terms of money Mm-hmm. because it was spider-man and you know like again like we're talking a reboot but people were still just like yeah but it's spider-man yeah hellboy and blade you don't have that luxury like even with blade and disney that's one of those ones where i'm like i don't know how well it's going to do whereas uh doctor strange 2 we're so far in between but it's a different ball game because it's not like we haven't seen him in other movies, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's different with him. We've seen him in other movies, whereas, like Ant Man, for instance, if Ant Man one came out, and then Ant Man two was going to come out sometime next year, I'd be like, "That's so dumb! Don't even release it because it's yeah. too far removed," right? Yeah. <clears throat> even though we've seen Ant Man in other movies, right? It's still just one of those that's too far. Guardians, however, that's that's going to do great because it has the advantage of being Guardians, right? By the time Guardians comes out, it's going to probably be like eight years since the second one. 
Right. But I guarantee you that that'll still make money. Oh, yeah, because they were in Avengers. Everyone knows what's going on with them. Right. But again, like I said, so at least these guys were smart enough to get the movie out there. And they made it made money. So there's that. It just sadly didn't make as much. Like this one, the budget's the highest at $65 million, which is still not a lot. No. Although I should say, I should preface that by saying it's it's not a lot by today's standards, which is crazy to say that. Yeah. Because like I remember like in 2004, if a movie made a couple hundred million, it was like, okay, well, this would be, especially if the budget was $65 million, they would have been like, yeah, all right, let's keep pumping out movies. The drawback though is this just barely beat out the first one at 132 million like just barely because the first one was 131.2 could you imagine that yeah i remember domestic box office blade 2 was 88 million yep blade trinity was only 55 yeah so that's less domestically than the first (laughs) right exactly exactly and uh, you can totally see why and I, i mentioned in the second one our second camcast of this uh, three-part camcast trilogy. Don't ask me what episode it is because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, but uh, <laughs> I did say that yes, part of the problem is David Goyer's directing. Or I said it was his pro- uh, that was a problem, but it's more than that. It wasn't just David Goyer. It was also Wesley Snipes, and it was also, you know. The story itself, like I, I didn't really touch upon that, but the story itself isn't. It, it's not a great story, which is horribly disappointing. Because when you hear Blade versus Dracula, you're like, "Holy fuck!" Especially, especially right? because, like, just knowing about the character, Dracula was one of his. Like, it was like Deacon Frost was one of his longtime bad guys, and Dracula was one of his longtime like his arch nemesis. And yeah. they would frequently kill Dracula bring him back that kind of thing same with Deacon Frost but so yeah and it was one of those where it seemed like a logical conclusion to the trilogy that of course he would fight Dracula right yeah Yeah. it's unfortunate that even like getting to that point it's it's not as cool as it should be or could have been yeah I mean I think the the big problem like I said in the last episode was I think it's a little too slapstick at times like there's a lot of comedy in here and a lot of comedy amongst everybody um but also they were using it as a night stalkers pilot right yeah yeah so that's like another part of the problem takes way too much time away from blade yep so you have well and that's just it so you have a a first-time director in david s goyer yeah you have uh for the first time in a long time wesley snipes being very shitty to deal with in this franchise where like the reason why they ended up going with david goyer ultimately was because blade or (laughs) wesley snipes didn't approve of the first director Mm -hmm. so he got booted but then like uh i guess from the sounds of it like a lot of this is snipes calling a hissy fit because he wasn't even though he was a producer and he didn't have any say in the casting or anything like that and it's you know so it's like oh okay all right and then you add in the the night stalkers like backdoor pilot so there's that yep. as well um then you have uh not the best portrayal of uh dracula which is unfortunate because the cast is really good like dominic purcell not that I would say he's a phenomenal actor by any means, but I like him and he's, he's a good, good actor. Oh, for and sure. he's good. He's doing the best he can with what he's given. It's just unfortunate that this is a really shitty version of Dracula, in my opinion, for the most part, there are some things about Dracula's portrayal here that I'm like, yeah, this is actually really cool. I like this. Yeah. Um, and, and the story unfortunately feels a lot like a retread of the first movie in the sense that, like, I know that the, the theme of every movie is essentially, like, they're looking for the super vampire, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this is the same thing. They're just now, instead of Blade, they want Dracula's blood to make them the, the super vampire. And it's almost like, well, did you forget that Deacon Frost actually pulled up the blood god, La Magra? And is he more, like, stronger than Dracula? Or is Dracula stronger than him? You know what I mean? 
so, and then of course, like I said, the, in the second one, they talk about the, uh, the cure, the vampire cure, the uh, day star. Yes. Day star. Yeah. Okay. Right. And you're like, okay, but that's also uh, a plot point in the first movie. Right. Yeah. You can also, argue. The sorry, whole, go on. The whole Reaper aspect they take from the sequel. Yep. Right. Um, well, they, they totally don't even mention that, actually. They don't mention it at all, but, like, Dracula's a reaper. They're making reaper dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So they don't mention it. But they talk about splicing uh, vampire DNA with other things. Like, it's a yeah. joke, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then you get the dogs that have the reaper mouths. And I'm part of me goes, yeah, but that doesn't, like, why would that happen, right? Like, yeah. like unless you were specifically splicing with reapers. But okay, fine. And Dracula having that, while very cool visually didn't make any sense because if he was the first vampire, then how come no other vampire after that has and that until we get the Reapers, right? Exactly. So the, exactly. there's things where I'm like, okay, that's cool. But then there's also the flip side where I go, yeah, but, and that's the problem. The biggest problem with this movie is there's a lot of, yeah, but, mm-hmm. and I could not help it. I really tried not to do that in this movie because I do really like the movie itself. Oh yeah, me I too. Start- when I start looking at it, like from a reviewer standpoint, then I'm like, oh, like, uh, like you talk about how it's more of a jokey movie all the way around. It is, but it's not, I don't think it's as jokey as you make it out to be. I think it's jokey in the sense that of course, you know, Hannibal King is Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Reynolds is fucking hilarious. Oh yeah. He's so great. But his, his character, it like it suits his character for that purpose because his character is kind of like that Spider-Man sort of Nightwing type of thing where he's making these jokes because, A, the scenario is fucking crazy. So it helps him to stay grounded, but it also throws people off because, you know, like, like I, I remember when Dick Grayson is first training Damien, uh, when he becomes Batman and Damien's his Robin and Damien's like, don't you ever shut up? And Dick Grayson's like, I know, I never did. Because every time I open my mouth, I'm making those guys mad. And the matter they get, the mistakes they made. So it makes sense for that character. Um, Hedges, Patton Oswalt, he makes a couple of comments where I was like, mm, okay, I don't know about that. Yeah, like, yeah, a couple of comments. Um, Parker Posey, though, she's pretty sarcastic. You know, uh, see, whereas her, like I would say, she's clearly the Deacon Frost character. In she this. is, but she's a lot more sarcastic than Deacon was. I don't think she's sarcastic, actually. I looked at it more like she was kind of like a little bit of a dork, actually. Like there's the the scene where okay. she first meets Blade, and yeah. she does that whole thing, like uh, she's I can't remember what exactly what she said, like uh, oh hey, like how you doing, Blade, or something like that, and she's just Ugh, that's stupid. You know what I mean? Yeah. When she initially meets Dracula, like she's not like, like Deacon was calm and cool throughout the whole movie. She's not. Okay, I kind of like that. She's just dorky. Yeah, I, I, I like, like even fucking. I uh, try to get through this one. Triple H's character, uh, Jarko Grimwood. <laughs> It's so funny to think there was a time when he was in a movie, a big no, no, no. Hollywood Here's movie. the thing: you fucking name your kid Jericho Grimwood. You basically said like we're raising a vampire. Like I don't care. <laughs> like I know they don't really touch upon who's a true blood and who yeah. who isn't. <laughs> Either but, a I mean, vampire he, or a warlock. <laughs> if, yeah, exactly. Like if he was if he was turned, he was turned because someone said, "Wait, that motherfucker's name is Jarko Grimwood." Bite him. Bite that guy. That juice monkey that works out all the time, let's just bite that guy, okay? Um, But I will say there's funny parts in this movie. The problem is is I don't think they were intentionally funny. Like, uh, well, okay, so like when the Blade's in the police station, right? Yes. And the Night Stalkers, this is a big introduction, they go to, to rescue him. There's this scene where now the cops are opening fire and on the night stalkers and they bust out of the hallway so now the cops are firing on jarko and the other vampire bad guys jarko who's the biggest guy like huge literally turns around and runs past this small asian dude and actually bumps him 
to get out of the way. And I'm like, oh my God, that's actually kind of funny. That wasn't intentional. There's a level of absurdity in this movie that wasn't intended. It just kind of happened. Yeah. You know? Although Jarko Grimwood in general is is a funny character. Oh, he's he is funny. He's a goofy he's guy. That, he's that douchebag jock. Yeah. Who's also a giant pussy. <laughs> Who made a vampire Pomeranian. <laughs> yeah. Who may or may not be into dudes. There was a lot of subtle hints that he was into dudes in that movie. Yeah. Which I thought was hysterical. <laughs> but like, um, I also think that, so in the first movie, you know, you mentioned that when they, they gave this to David S. Goyer and they said, hey man, like we want this to be like a campy movie. And he came back with this script that was anything but, and they were like, um, okay, we'll do it. I think this time around, and especially because we're talking 2004, so we got Daredevil and, you know, like we're on the cusp of all these superhero movies and Spider-Man and, you know, X-Men and all this. I think this is where they were kind of like, especially because of the Night Stalkers aspect, they wanted to make it a little bit more for kids. Yeah. Okay. Because the first two are rated R. I can't remember if I checked what this was rated. It's R. It is? Yeah. But I feel like this is a soft R. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, I it's, mean, it would be. It's, there's a lot less gore and shit in it than the first. Yeah, so like, I feel like uh, it was the studio and the other producers. Like This might be also why Blade, or Wesley Snipes is kind of like, what the fuck, right? Because... Like, even from Blade 1 and 2, this is a progression of the story of Blade's character and the world that he's in. In Blade Trinity, there's only a couple of aspects that I felt really added to this new this world. But that's it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. That's it. And, and while I agree, yes, it's more jokier, I don't agree in the way that you think it is, I guess, is my okay. point. But can you see where I'm coming from? Like, I see where you're coming from. I do, 100%. 100%. I like the uh, aspect where you said, like, she's dorkier. Because the whole time I was watching this, I was just like, why do, like, every character in here outside of Jessica Biel as Abigail just seems stupid. Everyone seems so stupid. But I think that's because they are. Yeah. You know, like, I think that's that's where it is that they're all just stupid, you know? Like, because... uh, I mean, we're talking about like trust fund kids, right? Like, yeah, they're all like rich vampires and they're probably like from vampire money. None of this is all earned. They just had everything given to them. Yeah. This whole setup um, was all just, here you go. This is it. And then they're trying to like etch it out for themselves. So their first thought is, let's get Dracula. Let's Mm -hmm. become pure vampires, right? Okay. All right. Oh, you know what? I gotta go back. The the very the, the very beginning, very, very beginning of the movie when they show up in Egypt or wherever it was to find Dracula's tomb. Sumeria. The fact that Triple H gets out last of the helicopter, you know it's him because he's the biggest. He turns around the sun and gives it the finger. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Like, like right off like the bat, I was like his really? character in particular is just like ridiculous. But he's like like I said, like if you think of him as that douchebag jock, like that's the kind of thing this the fucking idiot would do. Like he would like slam a beer and then be like crush it on his forehead, throw yeah. it at somebody, and then be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like give the fiddle middle finger to the campfire around everybody, and everyone's just like, I, I don't know what's up with Jarko, but uh who invited him? <laughs> He's got a Pomeranian. Like, what is up with this guy? <laughs> He's got capped fangs. <laughs> yeah. I, I forgot all about the cat fangs and then when i first saw it i was like what the fuck's wrong with his teeth and i was like oh he he capped his fangs but now you think about it why would you cap your fangs <laughs> yeah but whatever whatever yeah whatever, whatever. <laughs> let's go through the uh so we talked about uh release date budget box office director writer again starring wesley snipes as yep. Blade. Yeah. Again, Chris Christopherson as Whistler. All right. Okay. Oh, it's the biggest cast. <laughs> it's a big a cast. Really and I cast. think that's why it's got such a big budget. Is the cast is big. Yeah. 
So you got Jessica Biel as Abigail Whistler. We yep. got Ryan Reynolds, as we mentioned, as Hannibal King. Dominic Purcell, as I mentioned, as Dracula or uh, as Drake. That's the only time I'm going to refer to him as that from here on out, okay? Dracula. I hate Dracula. that name. I don't like it when it's Tim Drake's new code name, and I don't like it when it's Dracula's new hip name. <laughs> also, again, while I like the character of Dracula for the most mm-hmm. part, and I hate his nickname, Drake, I also hate the way he dresses in this movie. Yeah. Leather fucking pants. <laughs> like the shirt and the adornments. I'm like, okay, whatever. Like yeah. it's from his time period. I still look stupid, but okay, I get it. But leather pants, like you mean to tell me that he's going to be like, I want the finest leathers to cover my bottom half. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's all. Um, you got to look good. You got to look good. What about, oh, uh, I mentioned Parker Posey is Danica Talos. I love Parker Posey. So no issues here. Plus, I, I, I like her character. Canadian Callum Keith Wren, Rennie, sorry, as Asher Tallow. So they're brothers. I believe that the brother and sister, I don't know if they're supposed to be twins or not. Yeah. Uh, once again, we'll mention actually he was billed as Jean Paul. Or no, he was Paul Triple H Levesque. That's right. Paul, yeah, yeah. Paul Triple H. Yeah, he's Paul Triple H Levesque again as the illustrious. Jarko Grimwood. <laughs> uh, Natasha Leone is Summerfield. Yep. I think this was right about the time she started to go nuts in real life. Which I is did, unfortunate. I, I, that's probably the only scene of true horror in this movie is when Dracula is like hunting her on the ship. Or when he's like trying to get to the kid. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Patton Oswalt as Hedges. Now I love Patton Oswalt. Mm-hmm. Love Patton Oswald. Didn't think weirdly, he added anything to weirdly, this movie. Weirdly miscast in this movie. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the the comment that I was talking about is like, so like Blade shows up, he's oh, and then he's just like, okay, well, uh, gentlemen and hottie. Yeah, and I never had an issue with that until I watched it uh, yesterday. In fact, or yeah, that's right. I finished it yesterday, and I went. Oh, that's weird. Like it's a weird thing. And I'm not even talking about in like the whole Me Too era. Just in general, like it's a weird thing to say because like if the situation was reversed, like let's say Hedges is gay, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think he'd be saying that to Captain America or no. Blade for that matter. You know, let's <laughs> let's keep it in, you know, or even Hannibal King. He would be like uh Blade, gentleman, a lady, hottie. <laughs> they, that would never fly so immediately I was like and also this is Abigail Whistler this is the leader of the Night Stalkers yeah you don't call your superior officer hottie in front of the rest of the Night Stalkers and then get away with it. And, I, and I know it's like he's the, the nerdy loser that'll that he's had sex with women I, I know that much that part was funny but it was just one of those like ah uh, the haughty line just eh, it didn't need to be there but anyway um so that's pretty much my casting i forgot to get the name of the young girl who played zoe though yeah i never got her name either um yeah no i think that's <clears throat> there's way more but i'm not filling it up with guys yeah, well, i mean there's the cop, the cop characters and everything that they deal with um but yeah, yeah that's exactly the ones. yeah um so yeah so right off the bat they kill whistler again (laughs) no no right off the bat they actually and this is one of the smarter aspects of this movie is how they outblade oh yeah no for sure for sure so like again it starts off and and blade is is kicking like killing vampires crazy freaking james bond type opening where he's like driving his car out of the truck and then like nodding to whistler and everything and then it's a weird opening and then playing and he's wiping ashes off his windshield like it's it's it is weird but it's still like at least that that part feels very much you know in the blade spirit so i'm like okay that's it really the opening fight scene is actually really cool it's really well done it's uh surprisingly well shot too which I, i was impressed by and then like i said like they you know they have uh blade killing uh, uh, what he thinks at the time is a vampire although 
I feel like Blade, with his senses, his superhuman senses, his vampire stuff, would be able to tell if you're a vampire or not, and not just a human wearing fake fangs. Yeah, not so much in the car when he's chasing him, but when he's on the ground and he takes him out, he should have known. Should have right. maybe be able to smell it or something, right? Yeah, exactly. Just something, something where he's like, "This doesn't seem right," right? Um, and especially because, like, they make a point later in the movie when he's being interrogated. And they go, "Do you know how many people you've killed?" And he says, "Like, one thousand and eighty-two or something like that." But they were all familiars. You don't have a mental note in your head of how many human slash familiars that you killed. Yeah. And not be able to tell that that's a, a, a vampire or not, right? Right. But aside from that, it was still really cool that they got him on camera. And I was like, oh, that's crazy that no one ever would have thought to do that prior to this, right? But they get him on camera, killing a human being. So now he's enemy number one, which is crazy. Because if you think about it, you're a black dude and you're killing a white dude on camera. And it's a brutal killing. Yeah, you're going to be enemy number one. So I thought that oh, yeah. was a really smart way of uh, beginning the story. I like what you said, though, about him ha- should have been able to know that was a human. They could have straight up had him walk up with a gun, pointed at him, and then go, uh. And then someone snipes out the guy and makes it look like he still shot him, right? Like That's, yeah, exactly. Or even, like, realize, like, They didn't even have to do the fake fangs thing. He could have just killed them because he's a fucking familiar. Like I said, he made a mental note of how many familiars he killed. So it's not a, it's not above him to kill this guy. Yeah. Right. It's one less potential vampire. And the guy's helping vampires anyway. So he's a bad guy. He's unrepentant. He's not going to suddenly wake up and go, "Ah, you know what? The last 10 years of my life, I lived it all wrong. I should never have been helping these vampires. No, his mm-hmm. whole goal is to become a vampire. He's going to do whatever it takes. Yeah. So they, I, but I like the idea of the sniping thing. You could have still done that, right? And then simple like Blade that, could yeah. realize that it's fake teeth, right? But it's just, again, one of those things where you're like, yeah, but. So, yeah, it was really cool how they did it, but it also made Blade look really stupid, and it made no sense because – Especially because up until this point, like everyone shits their pants when Blade shows up. Yeah. Everybody, even when they think that they've got the upper hand, they're still just like, okay, but it's Blade. <laughs> like, let's just make sure. Could we cut his arms off or something? Like, let's do whatever <laughs> we can to make sure that he's not going to kill us. Right. So that part was like, uh, you know. Um, I liked the farm aspect, actually. That part I thought was really cool. We're now, yeah, and horribly creepy, too. Oh, disturbing. It was one of yeah. those where it, this is one of the few where I go, yeah, that's really cool. And there's no butts because, yeah. like, visually, it was gross. Like, it was just like, oh, yeah, Giant but it made blood perfect sense. In them. Like, they even say, like, it just. It was way more efficient for, like, I mean, you can catch and release, but it's way more f- efficient for us to just continue to keep them alive. Yeah. Like, you can pump them for two, uh, two to 300 liters or whatever. And I was just like, pints, I think he says. And I go, oh. And then, you know, when, like, Abigail is horrified and she's trying to keep her composure, like, it's a great scene. And she goes, yeah, but, like, how could you find so many people? And it's like, 300 homeless people. 300 or 3 million, some number. Yeah. 3 million homeless people in, in America. Mm -hmm. No one's going to miss them. And you're like, Oh, and he says it like, it's just like, like he says it, like you'd figure like, this is what Deacon Frost was looking for. These are the, these are cows to us. We're going to keep them in these pens. We're going to farm them for as long as we can. And then when they die, we'll just find new ones. I don't fucking care. Pump them full of heroin, get them addicted to heroin. Then we'll dry them out, you know, like it's just, it's very matter of fact. And that's another reason why it's so chilling. So that's a really great scene for a number of reasons. That's, that's one, the whole idea of the concept Two, Abigail's uh, uh, reaction to it, Blade's reaction to it, like how he's trying to make the guy say it. Like the guy's like, you know, what's going on here. And he's mm-hmm. just like, what's going on here? Like, he wants him to say it, right? Yeah. Because I think on some level, even though Blade's seen the worst that vampires could do, I think on some level, even Blade's kind of like, I can't, I can't believe that this is what I'm seeing. Or maybe it's even something like, I, I can't believe I missed this. Yeah. You know? 
but anyway, uh, so we'll back up a bit. Yeah, back up. Um, so, okay, so they, they kill Whistler. Now we're at Whistler's death. Um, which I almost feel like maybe Christopherson was getting too old or something and he wanted like a quick out because he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't do too much in the movie and he's limping pretty good. It could be a real limp even. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I honestly think the only reason why he was in this movie was so that they could introduce uh, Abigail. Yeah. You know, like, like that's it. Yeah, but it's it kind of like a write-off. Because, like, all, all uh, the, the only thing that Whistler says in this movie really is, uh, you fucked up, you got caught. And, he, and Blade's just kind of like, yeah, I've been caught before. He's like, yeah, but not like this, you know? And then, of course, yeah. like, the papers and everything, he's just like, yeah, but not like this. And he's like, <sighs> you know, like, I'm just, I'm scared you're going to die alone. You're going to die with no one around you, that kind of thing. And you're just kind of like, oh, okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Now, if you didn't know that the Night Stalkers were going to be in this movie, then this would be one of those, like, oh but because you know like i mean <clears throat> even the first time we watched this movie we knew because the marketing for this movie was very much night stalkers oh big time big time so so you hear that line and like immediately i was like well whistler's dead right so again like it's possible that he just wanted to be in the movie and kind of wanted to be written out or whatever but i almost feel like they were just kind of like uh, yeah, we're going to bring you back just so we can introduce uh, Abigail. And then that's it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and okay, fine. Uh, the death was was all right. Like, I mean, you can't all talk right. the first one. I, th- I think the problem is we already watched him die in the first, just brought him back in the second, and then watching him die again in the third. Yeah, <laughs> and like his death isn't even even as good as the first. Yeah. Like, it's not even on the level. It's just like at this point you're i think we can agree we're just kind of like oh okay all right like he's dead and and i mean as great as the scene is when blade realizes that he's dead you know and he's surrounded by the guys and he just cross or you know crosses his legs sits down puts the blade down you're like that's actually really cool really powerful yeah it's not as powerful as it would be if this was the only time he'd been killed right because again you know the first one when he comes across him like we talked about in that the previous cam cast he doesn't look at him but he takes the sheet off Mm -hmm. he doesn't look at him the entire time it's still really powerful and it's way more powerful than this film and i know what they're trying to do and they tried the best that they could it's just it was one of those like okay yeah so yeah so getting like i said like it's just one of those if he hadn't died in the first movie and then for the first chunk of the the second movie the focal point was bringing whistler back mm-hmm. you know then you get this and you're like oh okay all right but anyway so that part i was like eh. <laughs> eh. <laughs> um the vampire's plan like i had said about using dracula's blood it was it was again just like okay well it was done better in the first movie. Yeah. But I do like that. Like, I love the scene where Dracula and uh, Blade are on the roof. And Dracula's like, like they're talking. And Dracula's just like, like, they think my blood is going to make them pure. <laughs> None <laughs> of these people know anything about honor to die by the sword. Not yeah. like you and me. And I was like, Oh, that's really cool. I like that. That sense of respect, like right away. And just like Daywalker. I, lo- I love how he just refers to him as Daywalker. Never mind. I love the fact that he doesn't even bother really fighting the Night Stalkers because pff, why would he? They're yeah. beneath him. But yeah. Blade, however, Blade is the one he's like, oh, I'll fight you. Like, you might actually be able to beat me. Yeah. You probably won't because I'm fucking Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I will say though. When they first introduce him, I like that parts of his body armor looked kind of like Bram Stoker's Dracula's body armor. They yeah. had red ribbed weird thing that he was wearing. Like I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. And then like the 
extensions of the armor and stuff like that. I thought that looked really cool. Ultimately, Dracula's like true form, his uh, final boss stage look, it was awesome. Like that looked oh, really yeah. cool. Oh yeah. Even though that Even though you part, got the I was Reaper like, thing going on. Yeah. The Reaper thing, like I said, looked awesome. It's it would have been cool. If those... He had something else going on with his jaw, you know, like like an extended jaw or something, like or or yeah. rows of fangs or just something to be like that is the ultimate one right there, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. Exactly. Because, like, I mean, granted. Granted, they uh, like when uh, Summerfield is talking about how uh, the cure to or the to wipe out the vampires, like on they're like the best way to do it is through Dracula because his blood is pure. It's not through like centuries of uh, dil- dilution. So you're like, oh, okay. So like, if he had rows of fangs, you could argue, well, of course he would. And every vampire after that would slowly lose the fangs until they had the standard. Uh, four fangs right you know um i mean i guess you could use that to argue the split thing but i don't know it's just one of those like i mean how much do we really have to do we have to explain everything yeah we didn't really explain anything in the first two movies you were able to just kind of go okay all right i get it you were testing vampires to make a super vampire and the reapers happened it was totally by accident and then this happened okay i get Mm -hmm. that yeah, but I will say that even even with that part, he still looked awesome. Like he looked. Oh yeah, no, he looks awesome. really cool in it. And a really cool visual take on Dracula, Definitely. which I liked. Definitely. I have more, but I'm gonna let you talk for a bit. <laughs> Just Abig- for a bit. I, I thought Abigail was really cool. I loved her introduction in it down in the subway with all those like punk yep. vampires going after her. Yep. Um, Ninja Turtles. Awesome, like bow staff thing she had. The uh, the punk uh, like skateboard punk vampires I thought was really cool because again like like we talked talked about in the first one where like like some of these vampires are going to be turned when they're really young so you're going to have like a group of punk kids that don't give a fuck they're going to do whatever the hell they want exactly. what are you going to do they're vampires right yeah, yeah. um and I thought that was really cool and you're right like the intro for uh, Abigail Whistler was so cool. So um, cool. The I don't know I don't know what they called it, but like the weird almost like uh like a bow string type of thing. Yeah, yeah, it that just, was like, really cool. Like she just whipped thumb. it up around. I was like, oh, oh fuck, and like and like Jessica Biel has always had like an athletic physique, but definitely dialed it up for this movie. Definitely looked like she could kick some serious ass in this movie. Like oh. I was like, who? She was awesome. like the Night Stalkers. The Night Stalkers are actually all pretty cool. Like, you know, all in their own right. They're all really cool. Mm-hmm. And I would have liked to have seen at least one movie spin out of this. For the amount of time they devote to the Night Stalkers, it would have been nice to see that. Yeah. Um, like, even, like, Hannibal King, like, Ryan Reynolds is fucking great in this movie, but it's Ryan Reynolds, you know? Like, yeah. it's hard to critique him because he's Ryan Reynolds in almost every movie. Mm-hmm. But this one works, you know? Oh, for sure. And for he, sure, and I think actually, I thought. Sorry, go on. I, I just, I, I think if it would have been more financially successful, we would have got that Night Stalkers movie. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Because there's that deleted scene where the Night Stalkers, or while uh, Whistler and King show up, and there's like a werewolf. They're about to fight a werewolf, which I was like, oh, see, like if we could have seen more stuff like that, I would have been like, that would have been really cool. So I was hoping for it. Um, and he got fucking jacked for this movie too. Oh, big time. Like, I remember, I think this wasn't too far from Van Wilder. And in Van Wilder, he, you know, he had a he had a physique in there, but not like this. Like, when they had that scene where he's chained to the ground on his knees, I was like, whoa, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that guy got in shape. And I mean, like, I, I do like how he, when he talks about it, he goes, I was miserable. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> It's like you never actually feel strong because all you're doing is you're you're eating and you're working out. So you always yeah. feel weak. You look great, but you don't feel strong. And I was like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, he was great. I, lo- I love I love Ryan Reynolds. Uh, his whole thing about Wesley Snipes on this movie. He's like, when I did Blade Trinity, I never met Wesley. I only met Blade. <laughs> well, and that's that's like we were talking about. Like I was saying in the beginning, where like when they talk about like. Well, he was uh, he was never Wesley Snipes. He was he was Blade. 
He was only dressed as Blade. You couldn't say, hey, Wesley, like, you know, it was Blade. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was that. There was, like, like Patton Oswalt tells a story about how he would literally just, like, Snipes would hang out in his trailer and just smoke weed all day. And, and at one point, like, Goyer had to pay biker a biker gang just to, to have backup because I guess, like, Snipes was like, I'm going to kick the fuck out of you. And Goyer was like, Oh yeah, you probably could. Uh, hey, biker gang! <laughs> like it's such a weird like the whole movie is is a weird like. I mean, for what we got, considering all the circumstances, this is great. Like it's awesome mm-hmm. for what we got. It's just, I mean, I really wanted to love this movie. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, like, I, still... I still really like the movie. I don't love the movie. I do really like the movie, but I wanted to love this movie. I wanted to be yeah. able to, like when. When Blade drove off in the sunset, I wanted it to feel like that Western where he, uh, he's riding on in the sunset. He's going to continue his war against the remaining vampires. You know, because like, I mean, even they, they raise interesting points. Like, sorry, the, ending, the, the ending, yeah, the ending bugged me. It was, it, it just, it felt so quick and just like cut off. Like, oh, we got nothing else to say. Let's just end it. Like a couple shots and then Ryan Reynolds was talking. He's like, oh, Blade disappeared. This happened. We don't really and, know oh, what and, happened. And as of as for Blade, he just and then just shows him driving away, and and then it was over. And so, like that's the end of the trilogy. Like, I liked that ending. It's just the build up to it was not. It was like you say. It was just kind of like oh, oh. like they had the one yeah. shot of him like on the the gurney, and you know, uh, Hannibal's talking about how like like uh, you know, the virus only affected his vampire half. It stopped his heart. But the human side was able to to mm-hmm. stay alive, and then you're like, "So is he still Blade? Like, does he still have uh, Blade powers?" And then they're like, like, "And he's he's still uh, he's still out there fighting vampires." And then you're like, "Okay, all right." So I guess I guess he's still doing that. But like, I mean, I do like how some of the stuff they touch upon, but it's they touch upon it, and then they don't do any follow up. So like at one point when uh, Hannibal King is like injured and he goes uh, so what about you blade like what happens when we kill dracula i don't exactly picture you opening up uh, a dojo in the y to teach karate and then that's it like blade walks out but then like so i'm left thinking like actually yeah like what would you do and that's one of those things that you don't hear in superhero movies they never really talk about like what happens i think the only other time that they sort of mention it is in batman like in the nolan trilogy because they go like like uh, Harvey Dent says, "Why well, don't I don't think Batman wants to do this for the rest of his life? I think he just wants to shake us up and then have someone else take on the role, or ultimately someone do what he does, but do it properly. I don't think he wants to do this for the rest of his life." And I and I thought that, and I was like, "Yeah, that actually, is kind of interesting, right? Because yeah, you know, we take it for granted because they've been around since the fucking thirties." that that's all they've doing that the never ending battle against truth or for truth and justice and all that. But what happens when you get rid of the vampires completely? What does Blade do? Nothing. They don't, <laughs> they just go, oh. so again, I'm like, that's really cool. But, but that's it. Oh, okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like overall, it's a good movie. It's not a bad movie. I mean, it's not like, it's not Batman or Robin. It's not Ninja Turtles three. It's not Catwoman or Jonah Hex or anything. Like it's a good movie still. Right. Right. Exactly. It's just you know, it's, it's just disappointing. Uh, it's unfortunately, what it's coming yes. on. Yeah. And especially it's, disappointing coming on two thousand four when there was so many great superhero movies coming out at that time. Yeah. Like, and again, like it's not like there was this huge metric at the time that they had to to meet because like we're talking like like okay sure you had X Men. Mm-hmm. And Spider Man, which was up here, but mm-hmm. you could still be hitting like, like I said, like Daredevil, in and around there was like, you know, uh, Ghost Rider and stuff. Like, not everything has to be these huge smash hits, and no one's expecting Blade to compete against movies like Spider Man or uh, Batman Begins or anything like that. But still, to be on that kind of level, right? Right. Right. Exactly. And especially because you hit Blade 
And it's such a surprise hit that nobody, I guarantee you, nobody was like, this will be the beginning of a franchise. 100% they were not. Because like I said, why else would they have killed off Whistler? Right. Then two hits. And it's like, yeah, fucking right. And then three happens and then you're like, uh, like if this was the first one, you probably would be like, this is fucking awesome. Like, this mm. is really good. And then, you know, if you hit the second one as the second one again, you'd be like, yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then if you switched it, so like Deacon Frost was the Dracula character in, in the Night Stalkers trilogy, or, or that one. Now Dracula's, you know, and it's Blade 1 is the last movie. Then you're like, this is awesome. And then when he's driving off into the sunset, you're like, fuck. Yeah. Could we get a fourth movie? <laughs> Whereas yeah, well, this then way, Night Stalkers would have happened. Yeah, Night Stalkers would have happened, and, and I think we probably would have gotten possibly two movies out of that one, but for sure one, for sure yep. one, especially because, again, we'd be hitting it during this time period where, like, you're throwing superhero movies out there, right? And it's, for the most part, doing pretty good. Like, like I was surprised that Daredevil didn't get a sequel, but Ghost Rider did. But still, like that's just kind of the idea where like you're just like, huh? Yeah, okay. Daredevil was so weird, eh? Like Daredevil doesn't get a sequel, but Electra gets her own movie. And again, Electra got her own movie, and you're just like, wait, whoa! It's not like Electra is this well-known pop culture character. Yeah. You know, yeah, they they took it off the back of, of Daredevil, but again, it, it's weird because it's not like. Like Daredevil was a smash success. It made money, but it wasn't like, mm-hmm. like, yeah, let's print more money. And then they do Electra, and then you're like, again, okay, we want to talk bad comic book movies. Electra is a prime example. This is better than Electra. Yep, hundred percent. And the worst part too is that they have a solid cast. There's enough working here that it could have been better. You know, it's unfortunate there's a lot of the behind the scenes shit that dragged this movie down. That's part of it. And the other part too, I think, is the lackluster script. Like I feel for David Goyer because he nails it the first two out of the gates. Like these are both really good scripts. And then this one happens and it's kind of like He must have just been overloaded. You know, like he had four years to work on the script for the second. He only had two to work on this one. Plus, well, I'm sure I'm there was a lot of studio involvement. Plus, Wesley was crazy by this point. And now he's um, juggling directing duties. Sorry, and what uh, what year did uh, Batman Begins come out again? Two thousand A year after this, 2005. Right, so he was probably also working on this screenplay for Batman Begins exactly. while he's doing this. Right, right. Exactly. So again, like like I've said in previous campcasts, like I've shit on him a lot, but I could feel for him here because now he's very much like Mr. Fantastic. He's spreading himself too thin. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just like that. I we never would have guessed. Full circle. Never would have guessed that that's how I would have tied it all up, but I just did that. I full just circle. did that. Full circle. Because I think we definitely talked about that in the first fucking episode. That's how we kicked off the first Blade Gangcast. Yeah. <laughs> and you're ending off Trinity. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's clever. Uh, That's clever. That just happened. Like, I was like, man, you can only get that happened. cleverness right here from Chris Mercy, everyone. That's and right. That's right. But only on campcasts, not in written form on geekpantsmedia.com. You will hear about it, but you probably will never see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the mythical art. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The, the long-awaited article that when you finally read, you'll be like, all this for this? We waited one, for this. One paragraph. <laughs> I did it. I wrote an article. <laughs> Fuck off. So, yeah, like... Yeah, <laughs> I guess. You yeah, know? That's, that's it. I mean, that's... The that's Blade the Trilogy kind of limps off. Is, this. is where you're just kind of like, eh. Like, even X-Men The Last Stand, like, at least in that regard... There was a lot. There was still like, what the fuck is going to happen now, right? Because you yep. you kill off Xavier, essentially, and then you you potentially get rid of Magneto's powers, right? So the two big coin flips for the reason why the X Men is happening, and then you're like, well, how do you continue the franchise, right? That's exactly. crazy. Yeah. Instead, we get this, and you're 
you're like, I mean, this could have been a lot worse considering everything that we talked about, all the backstage stuff and all the stuff we're talking about in, in David Goyer and all this, it could have been a lot worse. So yeah, great. This is a really good movie. Mm-hmm. That's about it. That's about it. Unfortunately, it's it's the worst of the bunch. Yep. It is. Yep. And no great one-liners either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that's not true. That's not true. Um, what was it? Uh, why don't you take a sugar-coated fuck off my dick or something like that? <laughs> Is that a Hannibal? Um, That's a Hannibal line, right? Hannibal. Hannibal. Well, it was another one where it was just yeah. Well, like, Hannibal uh, was dropping them left and right when the uh, the weird like nitrate stuff was coming through the vents or whatever. It's just like, what's that smell? And it was like, oh, I had a lot of garlic earlier and I farted. Silent but deadly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he he was great. He was great. I just I felt like Wesley didn't want to be there. He didn't. He wanted to do the movie because it's his character and he wanted so much to, to finish it. But like, he didn't want to do it the way they wanted to do it. And that's why I feel like a lot of studios were kind of like, ah, and he was like, ah, you know, and I, I guarantee you, he didn't want to do so much of the Night Stalkers to be such a prevalent point, you mm-hmm. know? Um, yeah. I mean, and again, like we're, we're also talking about, this is probably at the apex of his insanity. Because that's the only thing I can say. Like, I mean, he's a weird dude. Yeah. And, you know, you were saying like, it's, he's very egotistical. Yeah. Okay. But also he's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. It's, it's crazy that you would like, I mean, when I hear actors get so method and they, they refuse to be referred to as anything other than their character, I'm just like, okay, like I, I, I get that. But like, this is like, there's that level of method, but then there's also just that pettiness where he's like, ah, I'm just going to hang out in my trailer and smoke weed. I'm going to make you CGI eyeballs on my eyelids because I'm not going to open my fucking eyes for half a second <laughs> just because. Just because. You know what I mean? Like, like it's just like, wait, what? <laughs> and I never noticed that. Like, I remember thinking, oh, his eyes looked a little weird, but it was so quick, right? And then you find out later because of the internet that they're like, well, we had to cgi eyes on his eyelids because he wouldn't open them well, there, like, there, there's a couple million of the budget <laughs> like <laughs> he wouldn't open his eyes for a half a second all he had to do was this nope didn't want to do it so yeah insanity you know it's like fuck oh man wesley yeah exactly wesley fucking snipes as i was saying my name's chris mercier this is Kenneth Levitsky. Catch us on YouTube. Catch us on Facebook. Catch us on Twitter. Catch us on Instagram. Catch us on SoundCloud. Catch us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Catch us on Geek Pants. Well, catch some of us on geekpantsmedia.com. There's two people, Chris Fedick, who's prolifically on geekpantsmedia.com. And a very close second is Kenneth Levitsky. That's me. That is me. Thank you so much, everybody. Just put your likes in the comments. Yeah, let Let's us know what you want for Camcast 100. Camcast 100%. Let us know. 100. It's 100. coming. It's coming. It's coming. All right, everyone. Woo. Take care. <laughs>